Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Here with your daily free picks. Okay guys, so um, good day yesterday. We went four and two. Um, even more importantly in four and two guys, we hit both our two unit plays. Um, nice looking unders yesterday. Nice looking unders. And again, I, I told you guys in the video yesterday, and I know some of you guys messaged me afterwards and thanked, say, thanked me and say I got off some of these unders with the weather. There are other games out there guys. Um, not just that one with the with the under. We had a we we hit a lot of uh, unders in master class yesterday. Um, we got we barely got the Patriots game, but we got the Patriots uh, and Baltimore under. You guys see that weather in that game? If you guys are betting football, you have to know what the weather is going to be. Especially you know as we come in this time of year, it can be very interesting, right? There could be a lot of differences in the weather in the game. But we hit both those plays. Um, Cleveland, the Cleveland under, like no brainer. Absolutely no brainer. Now, Jacksonville, a little bit closer. But I want you guys to think about just how many things had to go wrong just to have that game be that close. Two turnovers in the defensive zone. Uh, an 85-yard, um, I think it was a punt return. Like 85-yard punt return. Um, a referee interfering with a defending player. That's just to get them close to going over that total. The amount of things that had to go wrong just to get them close to go with that total... Here's the reality of the situation, guys. Yesterday, um, 28 plus mile an hour winds, getting up over 30 mile an hour winds. Um, yesterday's Green Bay game, when winds over 27 miles an hour, yesterday's Green Bay game is the highest point total put up with a wind 27 miles an hour or higher in the last 30 years. Okay? No one's come close. The highest point total before that, the highest point total before that game was 42, uh, sorry, 43, 43 points that were put up when it went that high. Guys, um, yesterday I was looking at a couple different systems. One of the things I'm looking at, guys, when the wind is that high, not only do those games go under, um, the average the average going under, missing going over the total, on average, by 11 to 12 points. So it's a significant miss. Um, my one regret yesterday, I'm happy I got the two unit plays, but my one regret yesterday um, was not utilizing that information in a little bit better fashion and maybe buying those lines down like we've done before, moving it over to plus money. Because, you know, it's easy to say as a Monday morning armchair quarterback to say, hey, this is what we should have done. But given the information, given the fact we knew about the weather, that's something we could have done. So again, not knocking me. I'm just saying that, you know, there's always room for improvement. And that's the way you kind of have to look at things. You have to look at things. And this is why I go back not only over my over my losses, but I go back over my wins. Because I can look at this situation, I can say, you know what, Ryan? Next time, next time the situation comes up, you know, next year, a couple years from now, next week, who knows? Um, you know, 30 mile an hour gusting winds, uh, potential torrential downpour. Um Remember this, okay? Remember that. Go back to the system. Understand that, you know, on average, you're going to have 11, 12 point cushion. You can move that line and you can get a very, very significant value. You could even look at something that I don't do very often, which would be a pleaser, okay? If you have multiple games with weather, you could do pleaser. Now, we would have lost if we bet a pleaser on um, on the both two unit plays yesterday. But, you know, just imagine some of those things didn't go wrong. Okay, betting a pleaser, pleaser is basically you're giving away points. So rather than a teaser where you're getting points, you're giving away points in a pleaser. But you hit two of the games, you could be talking six to one, right? So I mean, plus 600, where you're getting, and on average, on average, you're winning by 11 to 12 points, including the losses. On average, you're winning by that, and you're giving back six points on two games. At six to one, there is a significant house edge. So these are the things that we'll look at. These are the things that, you know, we'll continue to grow on. And that might be a scenario where, you know, maybe I would play a teaser, my or a pleaser, I should say, maybe my one and only of the year. Also, potentially, there could be value even on a teaser on a game like that. So bottom line is, guys, um, we went four and two. We hit our two unit play. Masterclass, we hit our other two unit play. We had big day in Masterclass, hit some unders. Um... We got our other T in a play, and I'll tell you who it was, guys. It was Arizona, okay? Now, I felt like a genius, which doesn't happen very often, because I felt like a genius because I found out um, Buffalo secondary was going to be decimated, and I found out before it was even really announced. Um, 
It doesn't happen very often. It really doesn't, especially in NFL. But, you know, there I am, you know, walking around like king, like, hey, look what I found out. We got a nice tee in a play on Arizona. I got all this inside information. And, uh, and then they come out of the gates and they look like crap. And I say, okay, well, look, we, we knew that Buffalo's secondary is going to be absolutely decimated. I didn't understand why they weren't kind of going after the secondary. But fortunately for us, they come back, they take the lead. Life's looking good. Uh, they march down the field. They're going to go up two scores. Then they have a crazy interception. Um, basically, the ball bounces off the guy's hand, up in the air, picked off. Buffalo comes back. And Buffalo ends up taking the lead to what I believe they're going to win the game with 30 seconds left. And I thought, you know, this sucks. I mean, it really does. The, the odd time, you know, when you come across a real gem, um, you know, of information and stuff that the, the announcements, the official announcements didn't even happen until seven o'clock in the morning on Sunday that, you know, the three secondary players were going to be out with COVID. Um, and I mean, it's no brainer in the NFL. You lose three of your starters in the secondary. It's going to be tough to defend the pass game. So here we are now. I'm a little, little depressed because I'm like, how did this game turn out that way? And then the Hail Murray, the Hail Murray. If you guys have not seen him put up the Hail Mary, um, to the end zone into four defenders with two seconds left on the clock and we got the win, okay? I will tell you guys God's honest truth. Uh, maybe five, six, seven, ten years. I don't know. It's the first time I literally jumped up and ran around the house in excitement. I haven't done that in sports in forever, but it was such a letdown that we were going to lose that game um, and then jubilation. And, you know, we talk about luck, guys, and it's important you know, if you're a master class and you got to win on that game, it's important when you, you know, when you look at the the Toledos of the world and the other bad beats and stuff that, that we've encountered last little while, it's important that we remember, you know, this kind of game. So like next time, you know, we get backdoored on something, you say, oh, I'm so unlucky. A Hail Mary, guys, with no time on the clock into four defenders. Yeah, we'll take that on the luck side. So, all right, guys, that, that's it for yesterday's recap. Um... I'm going to do something different today, okay? I, I just, I have one play for you guys, and I have an additional play in Masterclass. I actually have a player prop today in Masterclass, um, but I have one play. But before I do, guys, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a full breakdown here um, and kind of walk you through what's going on. And you guys can ultimately make up your own decision um, on who you want to bet uh, on this game. So I have a total play for you guys, but I'm going to give you my analysis of the side game, okay? So... Right off the bat, guys, here's the money breakdown right now as of uh, about 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Minnesota, 52% of bets, 52% of money. Okay, Chicago, 48% of bets, 48% of money. So pretty even, right? Now, here's, uh, here's where it starts to get a little more challenging. Minnesota has gotten a ton of steam, a ton of steam. Many, 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 many steam bets, okay? In fact, they've gone from being a plus two and a half favorite to being a minus three and a, or sorry, yeah, a plus two and a half dog to being a minus three and a half favorite. So that is a very big swing to go from plus two and a half all the way to minus three and a half. So a very big swing. So you would think on the surface, you know, just from a pure steam chasing standpoint, you say, what do the, what do the sharps know about this game? What what am I missing? What do the sharps know that they're they're putting this much steam on the game? Um, now, on the flip side, though, guys, Chicago, I have four nice system indicators on Chicago, four nice system indicators on Chicago. So um, leaves me a bit of a conundrum, but let, let's look closer at this. OK, so Minnesota coming off back to back wins, um, they won 34 20 over the Lions. They had a really impressive win in Green Bay, uh, winning 28 to 22. Now, what did those two games have in common for Minnesota? They didn't turn the ball over. Not a fumble, not an interception, nothing. Now, what is Kirk Cousins' favorite thing to do in primetime Monday Night Football? Turn the ball over. So you, you look at that and you think, okay, you know what? There's a potential for some turnovers. Now, on the flip side of the coin, guys, the Bears have created fumbles this year. They have created fumbles, but they just haven't been able to get them. Okay, so really at the end of the day, guys, um, uh, Chicago's season, the Bears season, could be much different than it is 
had they been able to recover some of those fumbles. And in all reality, I think we can all acknowledge, guys, once that ball is out, it's it's a coin flip, okay? And I mean, over the long term, you would expect both on the defensive and offensive side that you would come close to getting 50%. But in the short term, it is possible that, you know, you could produce seven, eight, nine, ten 10 fumbles and only come up with one or two of them. It's certainly possible in the short term because we're we're looking at short-term variance and we're not factoring in like the law of averages, right? So um, it's, it's possible here, guys, that, uh, you know, the Bears could produce some turnovers, both fumble and interception in this game. Because, again, guys, I'm looking at a situation here where, you know, the Minnesota's coming in looking impressive, but they've done so and they've done a good job protecting the ball um, you know, against the Lions, against the Packers, they, they haven't given up a turnover, okay? Now, on the flip side of the coin, the Bears are coming in off three straight losses, okay? But I would excuse the Bears' losses, seeing as they lost to the Rams, the Saints, and the Titans. And their largest loss was against the Rams, where they lost by 14 points. Um, even losing 14 points, they were still a little bit more competitive than the end score suggests, okay? But again, losing to the Rams... Saints and Titans, it, it happens to the best of them, right? It really does. I mean, those are those are three great football teams um, that are tough to beat on any given Sunday. And the reality is, guys, now they're coming back home off three straight losses. They're coming back home and they're facing a team that they can beat and they know they can beat them, guys. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Chicago step up in this game. Now, Here's the conundrum, okay? I have the system indicators. I told you guys what I told you. Um, you know, my lean on the game would have to be toward Chicago, but I'm not gonna bet against all that steam. All that steam on Minnesota, guys, I've, I've learned my lesson enough times in this life. Uh, I've probably learned enough for three lifetimes, but I'm not gonna bet against it, I'm not. Um, so for me, guys, it's unfortunately going to be no play, but I will tell you something that I identify in terms of some value. I don't know if I'm going to maybe play a quarter unit or 20% of a unit on. I haven't decided yet, but I'll tell you where I did see a little bit of value, okay? And that's always what we're looking for. It's not about if we win or we lose. It is about finding the value because the money will take care of itself. If you find the value, guys, the money will take care of itself. Here's what I looked at. I looked at saying, let's, let's, Take what I said and and assume that, you know, some of the things go right about what I said. Like maybe the Bears can get some turnovers this game. And, you know, maybe they are hungry because they've come off three losses to three good teams. And, and they're all looking at this as, as being like, this is a pivotal game on the schedule. And they're coming into our house, into Chicago. Like maybe they can win the game. Here's what I'm looking at, guys. I I think that, you know, at, at plus 238, taking Chicago at minus three. So basically close to where the line started at, right? I mean, where this line originally started the weekend. You can move this line from Chicago plus three and a half over to Chicago minus three, and it's plus 238. Now that's intriguing to me because I look at this and I think, is this a game the Bears, you know, will, will take control of and win more than one and three? And I think, yeah, I think it really is, especially if, they can produce turnovers. Um, but again, guys, it comes back to the same thing again and again and again. I don't want to bet against all that steam. I don't want to bet against all the other sharps out there that seem to be on Minnesota. Um, and I, I don't and I don't want to follow them. I don't want to be on Minnesota because that's not how my, my gut feels. So at the end of the day, guys, my best play on the side is no play at all. And I think, you know, as boring as that sounds on Monday Night Football... That's the right play. But I do have a total play for you guys um, now that you've waited, uh, what, like almost 15 minutes to get this. So I do have a total play for you guys. I hope you enjoyed that breakdown and, you know, you can take from it whatever you think. And maybe in the comment section down below, guys, leave some feedback. Let me know what you guys think. What's your analysis of the game? You know, am I right? Am I wrong? Like, tell me what you guys think about the game. Um, and yeah, it's always interesting to hear. That's like why we've created like such a nice community now. And like you see down the comment section, like people ask questions. I get like tied up on the weekends. I go to answer a question, like three of you guys have already done it. It's fantastic. And I love that. So, um, maybe you guys can share with each other, share with me, like what your breakdown, what your thoughts are. Um, 
you know, I, I think I think for me, it's just going to be a, a no bet on the on the side. Um, anyways, guys, I do have a play for you guys on the total. I have four system indicators on the under. Um, thirty nine percent of bets, forty seven percent of money on the under. Say that again. Thirty nine percent of bets. 47% of money. Isn't that a nice money distribution? It's contrarian. We're betting with Vegas. That game goes under. Vegas wins, right? Um, as well, guys, we're between 7 to 21%. So 7 to 21% difference between bets to money, okay? 39% of bets, 47% of money. It's an 8% difference between those, right? And we're under 50%. We really like that. Plus, I have four system indicators, guys. Those system indicators come in anywhere from 55 to 62%. So very solid system indicators, especially in NFL football. All right. NFL football, we're looking at system indicators, guys. We're not typically looking at, you know, the same level of system indicators we might see in, you know, college basketball, which is coming up soon. Uh, you know, where we're looking at system indicators that come in like 64, 65%. No, NFL is much tighter. And that's why when we see value like that, we take advantage. So, um, Back on the under. So uh, that's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to go under 44 tonight, okay? Thank you guys very much. I appreciate you guys sticking with me through this long video, but I hope you enjoyed the breakdown and, uh, you know, a little bit of analysis about yesterday. And I, I hope you guys are learning a lot as we go along. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. And as always, guys, have a very lucky day.